Hello everybody, I'm Matt Hernandez. I'm a photographer from Kentucky and today I'm going to do a short tutorial and take you through a couple of the techniques that I use to create this composite image of University of Kentucky defensive back J.D. Harmon. So before I get going here, I want to go over the lighting setup. I did use a three light setup for this, which is very popular, especially in compositing nowadays. But people overuse it because sometimes I see, I see a lot of composites where they don't match the background lights with the subject. And that can be a big problem in, in making your composite believable. But with this instance, I thought it worked really well because my background here, these lockers, has these highlights on the top on both sides. So you obviously have light coming from both sides. So I thought it fit really nicely with this. So here's the lighting setup. I shot on a small piece of gray seamless, and I'm going to explain why I did that and three strobes. The one in the front is a, is a fill and it has a beauty dish on it and then the two on the sides have FJ Westcott medium soft boxes with grids on them. And the reason we have grids is because you want that light to be focused in because they're, the lights are aimed slightly towards the camera. They're at 45 degrees behind the subject and I'm shooting with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens which is going to create some lens flare. So when you focus those that light in with those grids it's really going to help help alleviate that. and it's not going to be quite as bad. So let's get into to how I created this now. And I'm not going to go through this step by step. I have a three part in-depth tutorial on YouTube of, how, of my compositing process, some of the techniques I use. I'm just going to show you a couple today. And the main one is how we can kind of skip the part of creating a perfect mask for his hair. We're going to get around that. Okay, so here's the final image. I'm going to turn that off. Here's the image opened up from Lightroom, and I flattened it out a little bit by sliding the shadow slider to the right and the highlights slider to the left, and decreasing the contrast because I'm going to put I'm going to create adjustment layers with blending modes over it, so I'm going to build up some contrast. So there's the original. Now I shot on a small piece of gray seamless, and the reason I did that normally, you know, I knew that I was going to shoot this this locker picture was going to be the background; it's horizontal. You want the whole background to be gray here because we're going to use blending modes to help these layers interact with each other. And the reason that I shot on a small piece is because it's easier to travel with and I know not everybody has a studio, so taking one of those big pieces of seamless can be hard with you where you're, if you're having to go on location. So this is a lot easier to travel with. Problem is it doesn't extend across the whole background. So what I'm going to do is extend this, and I'm going to show you how very easily. I'm going to press the I key on my keyboard, or just go over here to your eyedropper tool, and I'm going to select that gray color in the background. I'm just going to click. All right, so now gray is my foreground color. Go over here to my layers palette, create a new layer. It's, it's the button to the left of the trash can, or you can press Shift Command N. I am on a Mac, and it's going to create a blank layer. I'm going to name it gray background. Now I'm going to go to edit, fill. And make sure foreground color is selected in my use and under contents. Hit OK. There we go. Now I'm going to drag my picture of JD on top of that and I'm going to mask him by pressing my mask tool, this little rectangle white box with the gray circle in the middle. Click that. All right, now I want to get rid of this part right here and right here. And so the way we're going to do that is press G on the keyboard to go to our gradient tool, or you can go over here in the tools, tools bar on the left. If your background color is not black and white, make it black and white by pressing D. All right, And then make sure white is your foreground. I'm going to click on the edge of his shirt here. Make sure you're on your mask. And I'm going to drag to the right. And that's going to that's gonna make the background, that layer underneath, show through right there. Make sure your mode set to multiply also, by the way. And you have the horizontal gradient tool, the linear gradient tool selected. Okay, same thing on this side. Okay, that looks good zoomed out, but zoomed in, you see some texture. It would have been better to shoot this on a collapsible Westcott background probably with gray. I don't have a gray one. I have a black and white one, so we had to use paper on this one, but I highly recommend that because that, then you're not going to have these wrinkles here and you'd be completely done. But um, now we're going to have to get rid of some of that too. So I'm going to press B, or you can go over here to your brush. Right and left brackets make the brush bigger and smaller. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Make sure my hardness is zero and mode is normal. Make sure you're still on your mask. And then I'm going to paint away. Oh, okay. Make sure black is selected. Black conceals, white reveals on the mask. So we want to paint away, so we want black selected. So I'm just going to click and start painting here. Get rid of some of that texture. And this does not have to be perfect. We're just getting most of it taken away here. So that it doesn't, because it's going to show through with the technique I'm showing you on the background if we don't take it out. And a little bit's okay. It's not going to be noticeable. Okay, 
Now I'm going to press X to make white my foreground color, make my brush smaller by pressing the left bracket key. I'm going to go in, paint over JD, make sure that all of his body is at 100% opacity here. Because I got some of it when I was painting away that texture, I think. Okay, there we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's get this little part right here. Okay, now I'm going to hold Shift in my layers, select both of them, and press Command E to merge them. Now I'm ready for my lockers. This is again opened up straight from Lightroom. I didn't. I don't think I adjusted it at all. This is the raw image. You can see there's some distortion going on here because I used a 14 to 24 millimeter lens, zoomed all the way up to 14, and I was really close here to these lockers. So it, they're kind of bending. Photoshop has a great lens correction tool. So go up here to Filter, Lens Correction. It's going to automatically detect what lens you used, and it's going to straighten out those lockers, which is pretty cool. Press OK, and there you go. Okay. Now I'm going to press V for my, and make sure my move tool is selected. Click on this, drag it up on this top tab where JD is, and drop it down in the image. Okay, now I'm going to name this Lockers. Okay, press Command minus to zoom out. Now we're going to go full screen here by pressing F once, and then you can press the space bar for your little hand tool to come up, click, and drag around anywhere you want to. Now we still have a little bit of a problem here because these lockers are still pointing out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is make sure they're selected and go to Edit, Transform, Perspective. And what this is going to do, when you mouse over the edge, that little white arrow comes up and drag, it's going to do the same thing to both sides. So you're creating a perspective and you're fixing that. That looks good. I'm going to press Enter. Now I'm going to press Command-T or you can go to Edit, Free Transform. And I'm going to turn this a little bit, zoom out so I can see what I'm doing here. You can hold Shift to constrain your proportions and drag this out, make it a little bit bigger, just like that. Get this all the way out to the edge here. Okay, hit enter. I've got a guide drawn here to, so I know where to put my background for my previous image. You can press Command colon to bring up your guides. Command R brings up your rulers. You can click and drag. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. You can click and drag to create guides just like that. Drag this down, just make sure my background is lined up where it's supposed to be. See, we're still a little bit crooked there. When you mouse over the edges here, you can you can turn, when you free transform, you can turn the, the layer right there, make sure we're pretty straight. Okay, good. Make it a little bit bigger, just slightly. Okay, okay, that's close. All right, press command colon to turn the guides off. Now, I want this to interact with that layer below of him. The reason we shoot on gray is because when you set these this lockers, when you set this background layer to soft light, it's going to turn everything that's gray below the layer transparent, so you can just see him. Now, we lost a little bit of contrast there, we, but we're going to fix that. The main thing I'm worried about is the hair. That's going to help us get around creating a perfect mask for him. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. Okay, I'm going to turn the lockers off for a minute. Now, we're going to have to create... We are going to have to create a mask around him on a second layer. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to press my W tool. Go over here, make sure your quick selection tool is selected. And make sure your hardness is set to 100%. Auto enhance is on. I'm going to show you how to train this. I don't use the quick selection tool. I, I didn't use it on this one, but I'm going to show you how because I know that's what most people are going to do. So make sure you're on JD and just paint one little piece there. It doesn't matter where as long as it's on him. Now I'm going to make my brush smaller. I'm going to hold the Option key. See, I have a plus in there right now in the middle of that brush. When you hold the Option, the minus comes up, and that means you're going to take away from the selection. So I'm going to train the Quick Selection tool right now. Because this background is gray, and, he, and he's got a black shirt on and black hair, it's probably going to pick up some of that background when you're trying to select him. So we're going to, we're going to alleviate that at least a little bit and make it easier on ourselves. So I'm going to hold Option and paint around him. Now make sure you do not get him, because this is telling the brush where you do not want to paint, where you don't want to select. Okay, so just get right along the edges and it doesn't have to be perfect. Just a general idea that's going to help the selection. It's going to make it a little bit easier for you. Okay, and I'm going to go in here to this little piece in between his arm and paint that away too. And this, this, I promise you, the quick selection tool would have select up, selected this part. It's too small not to. Little tight areas like that are kind of hard sometimes with the quick selection tool. Okay, zoom out. 
All right, now I'm going to make my quick selection tool bigger, and I'm going to select him. So I'm going to do this. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, although you do want the mask to be pretty good. We're going to have to refine it a little bit, though. So yeah, I didn't select that part in between his arm. That would have been really annoying if we tried to do that without training the brush first. Okay. That looks pretty good. Oh, zoom in here. Okay. And there's a little piece up here too. I'm not going to go through this 100% just because it's not the way that I that I work, but I am going to show you briefly how to how to do the quick selection tool. Okay, press for fine edge now. Make sure smart radius is selected. I've got my view set to overlay that way. Everything's red is what is not selected. And then I feather it 0.3. My radius is about around 15. Um, and make sure your output's set to new layer with layer mask. Now you're gonna make your brush a little bit bigger and paint around his hair here to help that show through. Okay, now you're gonna hit okay. Okay, so see now the edges are foggy. What you'd have to do is select a brush, just a regular brush tool, make the hardness, I don't know, probably about 75 maybe, and then go on your mask and paint in the parts that it missed right here. And personally, that's not the way I like to work. So you have to, it's gonna have to be pretty good. I mean, it's not gonna have to be perfect. The hair you wanna leave alone but you want his shirt and his body to be pretty good. So that's not the what that's not what I do. So I'm going to delete this layer. I use the pen tool. And I've already got a pen, the path selected here. Now if you want to know, know a little bit more how to use the pen tool, that's in my tutorial on YouTube on my compositing process cuz I use it on almost every one because I feel like I have more control over what I'm selecting. Now, there is a learning curve and a lot of people don't like it, but if you get the hang of it, it really is very useful. So if you want to know how to use that, then go ahead and and check that out on my YouTube page. So I've got my path done already. I'm gonna command click on it. That's gonna select him. And then we're gonna mask. Oops, I'm sorry. Let's deselect. I'm gonna duplicate that layer first before I select him by pressing command J. Now I'm gonna go back to my paths, select that path, and then mask him. I'm gonna change, double click on the mask and feather it one pixel. That's gonna soften it just a hair, okay. Now I'm gonna drag this on top of my lockers and turn them back on. Okay, see now, now we're starting to get somewhere. And he's masked pretty good now. There's a few parts I might have to fix, like right there. But that's not a big deal. I, I would much rather, it's faster for me to do that than, than to use the quick selection tool. Okay. All right, now, what we're gonna do, to see that, that um, sharp line there that's from the path because the selection wasn't you didn't create a mask for his hair you just kind of went inside it there so when because when you use the pen tool i'm going to show you my path right there you you don't go, you go inside the hair and the and what we're going to do now is i'm going to press command and click on my mask got my selection up again make sure i'm on him not the mask so press w to go back to my quick selection tool and hit refine edge again now we're going to create the hair layer. And we're going to do the same thing we just did. But I'm going to paint over the hair just like this. Make sure you're on new layer with layer mask. That's not even close to perfect, but it's going to do what we need it to for this. Hit OK. OK. Now, I'm going to go back to my first one. I'm going to name this Pin Path. And I'm going to name my second one Quick Selection QS. OK. Now, I'm going to turn the quick selection off. You see that there's still that hard line there. I'm going to select my brush, make it bigger, make black my foreground color, and go in and paint away the edges of that so it's not quite so hard there. Actually, I'm going to make it a little bit softer before I do that. Now I'm going to turn my top layer on. There we go. Now that's, that's really starting to look good. And let's see. The edges, see there's some foggy edges here with my quick selection tool. I'm going to paint those away too. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my brush and then go over here to overlay on my blending mode of the brush. I'm going to show you what that's going to do. If you hold if you hold option and click on your mask that shows you the mask. See these foggy areas? 
when you select overlay as your blending mode with your brush and you paint on the edges, that's going to get rid of that foggy, that foggy stuff. Just like that. Get rid of it on his hair too in a couple places. It's not too bad. Don't overdo it though. Just get the main areas that are going outside the selection you want because those will show up a little bit. Okay. All right, I'm gonna press option again on the mask. And there we go, now it's back. Okay, now we've got the illusion of a pretty good mask there. Now we didn't we didn't mask his hair totally. We we kind of cheat a little bit, but it's not gonna matter. I mean, nobody's gonna be able to tell. I mean, that looks pretty good. Okay, now it, the lockers look a little bit dull. So what I'm gonna do to fix that is go down here to my adjustment layers, make sure my lockers are selected. I'm gonna make a group real quick with this, with these two selections, press command. I'm gonna press shift, select both these layers with my quick selection layer and my pin path. Press command G and name this selection. All right, now I'm gonna select my lockers again because they're a little bit dull and a little bit dark. And then go down here to my fourth option, this little circle that's half white and half gray. and create a levels adjustment layer on top of it and then I'm going to option click between the layers so that little white box with the arrow comes up and then when that when you click that little arrow comes up to the left that's going to link it to that layer only and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the midtones here on my on my levels to the left to make it brighter and then I'm going to slide my dark my black slider here on the left all the way to or not all the way to the right a little bit to the right to increase the contrast just like that okay see there's without levels and there's with and now you can see when I zoom in that hair looks pretty awesome I mean that that looks just like we created a perfect mask for it especially with the levels on top of it okay now we're ready to go um, the next step for me would be I've got a few adjustment layers here I've got four of them and I've got blending modes attached to them you turn those on to blend the image now we're really getting somewhere okay you cannot tell that we didn't create a perfect mask for that. It looks great. And I'm not going to go through the rest of the steps. Like I said, if you want to see more of my compositing process, you can go to my YouTube page and look at my three-part tutorial. So again, there's the finished image um, with some retouching done to it and some filters and that kind of thing. But that's it. If you want to learn more about me, you can go to my website, madhernandezphotography.com. I've got a blog and all my contact information with my social media on there if you want to follow me. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I will see you again next time. Thanks for watching.